Welcome everyone to the April 26, 2017 meeting of the Rotterdam Town Board. Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Present. Mr. Lamore? Present. Mrs. Miller Barrera? Present. Mr. Bolano's absent? Mr. Tomazo? Present. Four present, one absent. Would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, have just a few uh, brief uh, announcements, comments, etc. Uh, first, uh, this evening we uh, began our agenda meeting at approximately 5.30 p.m. <laughs> at approximately 5.46 p.m. we entered executive session with a motion by Member Christu and a second by Member Larmore, all signifying in the affirmative uh, to enter executive session at 5.46 p.m. for employee matters 04262017-1 and 04262017-2. Uh, we also um, had a motion by Member Bolano, who was here at the time. Uh, Mr. Bolano is, is uh, absent this evening. Um, he had some some other matters to attend to, but uh, was here for the uh, for our meetings that we had. Uh, we had some other information that was dispensed, and I wanted to make sure that he was here for that. Um, but Mr. Bolano, uh, seconded by Member Larmore, um, inviting uh, our Highway Superintendent Larry Lamora to the uh, executive session. All voted in the affirmative. Uh, we exited executive session with a motion by Member Christou, seconded by Member Larmore at 6.06 .06 p.m. All again affirmatively uh, saying aye to exit executive session. Uh, we then um, ended our, our meeting, our agenda review, if you will, an agenda meeting at uh, 6.43 p.m. with a motion by Member Larmore and a second by Member Christou. Well, again, all folks uh, voting uh, aye to exit executive session. Um, I just have a couple of uh, couple of brief uh, announcements to to make here. Um, so, for those of you that are here present, and, and you see this announcement also on our website, and uh, I think that there'll probably be some other, maybe some other, maybe minor media attention to it. But on uh, Friday evening at 5:30 p.m. at Jiraca Park, which is located Jiraca Parkway off of Miles Standish Road and Priscilla Lane, back you know in, in Colonial Manor, um, there will be. A, um, uh, the Parks Advisory Board is asked uh, to let everyone know and invite uh, the public to a, a, a sign dedication at Jiraca Park uh, Friday evening again 530. The new sign is the culmination of the partnership between the Park Advisory Board of the town and members of the Schenectady ARC Maple Ridge Center on Hamburg Street. And uh, so we'll have a, a it's really a long, a long overdue sign dedication. We actually put the sign up months ago, uh, but we just couldn't coordinate schedules to, to have a dedication. Uh, so we'd like to invite you to to, uh, to be there if you have the have the time. Also, um, uh, our engineer uh, Aaron Frank, who um, is committed uh, to um, assisting us with our MS4 annual report. Um, just this is just an announcement that I have to make here for that. Uh, this is an announcement that the Town of Rotterdam's draft MS4 annual report has been completed. The report summarizes the town's efforts and progress with the requirements listed in the MS4 permit. Uh, the report can be reviewed by the public at the Department of Public Works during normal business hours and a copy will be placed on the town's website for review and this has to do with stormwater management in the town and where how it is that we are um, operating uh, our, with our stormwater management uh, under the DEC's um, guidance if you will and review. Also uh, just a reminder, um, next month, uh, our meetings uh, for May 10th and May 24th. So the town board meeting uh, May 10th, 2017 will be held at the Rotterdam Junction Fire Department. Uh, we will begin there at 5.30 p.m. with our agenda meeting and then uh, go into our regular business at 7 o'clock. Um, and then also May 24th, uh, our town board meeting will be held at the Center for Advanced Technology at the Mahanasan campus. One of the reasons that we're doing this is um, is uh, well, the only reason we're doing this is that we have some work that we're hoping to get accomplished in our in our town hall here in a couple of hallways and flooring and, and other things and if you you know when you exit if you haven't seen the duct tape on the carpet you know take a closer look at it those carpets that are out there were the ones that were originally in this building when this building was created 30 plus years ago so as you as you start to see 
some of uh, the work that's going to going to be done. So we don't want to have I don't want to have uh, meetings here while some of the work can be done maybe in the evenings and, and other times so that we would hopefully have enough to get as much accomplished as possible. But also, um, we always hold our first meeting in May at the Rotary Junction Fire Department on 5S, so you can come out there and, and, and see us there. Um, and um, I thought it would be a good opportunity for members of the board that maybe hadn't been to the uh, Center for Advanced Technology, Mahanas, and also the public to see the building and uh, what's going on over there. It's a phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal um, um, opportunity for our for our children here and, and elsewhere. There are kids that are uh, coming, uh, students that are coming from all over the <coughs> district to uh, use that facility. So we don't have any other proclamations or presentations uh, or public hearings uh, this evening. So Ms. Marco, we have for privilege of the floor. Gary Fox. Hey, thank you uh, for allowing me to talk. Uh, a couple weeks ago I was here and I mentioned the uh, problems with Time Warner, them up in their rates at, not at its spectrum, anywhere from 30% to 100%. And that, that's done, there's not too much you can do about it, but it was my understanding that I got, got that evening that the Rotterdam did not sign uh, an agreement yet with uh, Time Warner. All I'd like to have you do is put into consideration maybe if and when that ever gets signed, that maybe today uh, telephones aren't a necessity, possibly internets are not a necessity anymore. You know, in, in the past, obviously, you know, there was other ways, let's put it that way. But everybody has a telephone, everybody needs a telephone right now. So I'd like to just bring that up that maybe if we do sign a contract with Spectrum that somebody can put in there that, you know, a telephone is a necessity and it shouldn't be upping your rates on a monthly basis anywhere from 30 to 100%. Uh, that's all I really initially wanted to say tonight, but just a change of subject. Uh, on Curry Road, uh, the old price chopper area. Friday, they took down anywhere from 100 to 1,000 cold grown trees in that area. That uh, happened Friday after, well, it started Friday, dropped the equipment off. By Saturday, I'm saying at four o'clock, there were no trees left on the property, period. Everything was gone. Uh, we should have known that was happening. Maybe we did, I didn't, but that's beside the point. I'm just hoping that this board and the contractors are aware of how much water that trees drink. We just lost maybe a thousand trees. I am 100% positive that next spring my cellar is in a flood if they didn't take this into consideration. I just want to bring that up and it's on the record now. So if our cellars in that area start flooding, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be coming here because of the actions that were taken last Saturday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, as far as the time order situation, have you noticed the, the prices going down since they turned, switched to Spectrum? No, that's when the prices went up. They went up anywhere from 30 to 100% when Spectrum took over. Like I say, I got my last bill last, well, two Wednesdays ago, that night I came here. I was shocked. It's ridiculous to have a bill come up, you know, 100% difference in, in just a telephone. And what they advertise on television, on, on camera, they advertise $30. That's what they advertise. But every nut, bolt, wire, connector is all charged and it's all rented now. Yeah. And so when you figure it out, it went up anywhere from 30 to 100 percent, depending on what you have. Uh, are you going to stay for the entire meeting, or are you? I wasn't going to planning. On okay. Um, What's your address for the record, so I know? Uh, 2185. 2185, okay. Yes. So, because I, I will, um, what I'm going to do um, is just have, have someone review the plan for that project with you so that you know where the green space is going to be if you haven't seen it yet and, and know where the trees, okay. Unless you're gonna plant new trees, there there's, is no there's, green there's gonna be everything there. You're gonna see new trees, you're no. gonna see green And, and that's what my understanding yeah. was before. Yeah. I was kind of shocked, you got a, uh, you know, yeah. uh, 40, 50, 60 foot trees taken down. And I'm not talking about a few trees. I'm saying hundreds, if not thousands. There is nothing left on that property now. Unless, like I say, they're gonna plant them. But they're not gonna plant thousands. And they drink an awful lot of water. That's my main concern. Okay, well, thank you very much. You know, I think the situation on that though, if you've got huge, tall trees, and they're putting uh, 
buildings in. They don't want to take their chance at a huge tall tree like that falls down on their building. I, I'm not second guessing anything. Never. I know nothing about it. I just, you know, I'm worried about the water table going up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and so, 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 you know, I, what I want to have done is, uh, is that either I will come out to visit with you and or the developer will meet with you and we'll, we'll show you what it is that is going on there and, uh, so that so that you can hopefully your concerns will be allayed if not we'll, we'll figure I know a couple of the other neighbors yeah call I, I did get a call I did get, you know I know that someone else reached out to us regarding some trees that were let's put it this way people were walking into the that there's about I think it's about three acres I forget exactly how big it is but Behind the old one was Kmart Price Chopper, right, right in there, yeah. and um, and uh, that property really was 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 overgrown. But people would go back there to walk around or walk their. Oh, it was trails and everything right, exactly, else. Exactly. So I want to show you what it is they're going to do over there, and okay, uh, I appreciate and understand that the other piece is that a lot of the black top that's there now, as you can see, is going to. They're, they're taking that all right. Up. You're going to have a lot more green space there than there ever was before. So I. And I hear you loud and clear, but let's let's we'll we'll meet there together. We'll I guess we'll see what happens next yeah, exactly. spring. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Okay, thank thanks, Mr. Fox. Appreciate thanks, Pierre. Joseph Pirelli. <coughs> Good evening, Joseph Pirelli, twenty-seven zero three Myrtle Avenue. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, just a couple <laughs> quick quick questions on tonight's agenda. Um, two appointments. First one is Department of Public Works full-time provisional. And then on this second item, it's full-time probationary. What, what's the difference between provisional and probationary? Well, uh, provisionally, when someone gets hired, they're hired based upon their qualifications, hired based upon um, the opportunity to have to take an exam for that, for that position, okay? Um, and uh, and so you know, are they are they still probationary? Yes, it's really no one than anything else. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and uh, for the laborer position, the laborers are not. Um, you know, we don't test the laborers, so they're hired based upon their qualifications only. And uh, and so there's also probationary. What we do is approximately a year's time. Do some uh, employees, depending on their level of um, of experience, work ethic, and so on, uh, get get. Uh, uh, basically get off probation earlier than a year oftentimes that happens because they're they're putting forth the effort right? yeah okay yeah. No, um, okay. yeah. thank you mm -hmm. um, sure next two agenda items the, the bids are there any dollar amounts on these accepting of the bids rough um, those are in um, I the actual know. resolutions I can tell you all right I, I thought you'd have a, 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 the actual resolution. we don't then yeah. I can see it up there so no big deal I, 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 can, get I, I can give this to you right now if you want no you can you can take it okay. no, serious. I, all right yeah you, you, take, you take if you want but what happens is I mean really to just save paper yeah we don't we don't we don't provide every single okay. piece out there for uh, folks but those, those are those are those are those bids and all that information is online at, on our website really all the other detail I could but, say uh, it with my uh, with that's, my eyes. That's okay. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 there with you on that. Um, I have to hold things at different, depending on the font Distances. size. Distances. Yeah. So um, yeah, so okay. here these these bids come. You know the bids come in. They're open here at Tom. Yeah. Hall, no. Uh, no. I'm, I'm fine. Hall. I just wanted. Yeah. That's that's good. Okay. Um, another thing. This past weekend, Paul Cook hosted a uh, volunteer cleanup at, at the Kiwanis Boat Launch. And, had I known sooner than I was reading it at 12 o'clock and it ended at 12, I probably would have gone because yeah. I actually use that boat, boat launch. But um, Kiwanis Park is a town park, correct? It is a, it is state land that the town in many, many years ago um, had some agreement. And I, I'm not sure where in the files that Ms. Marco might have down the hall or down the first floor or where they exist, but we have maintained that park as a town park for, for, for decades. Uh, and uh, so uh, there is, um, if you didn't see this from the last couple of meetings, there, there is uh, new equipment and other improvements that are going to be done throughout our town parks, not just down at Kiwanis. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, I, I met with our, our sign maintenance um, employee, uh, Mr. Isabella, just uh, two days ago because we need to put a new sign up in the front there. That sign uh, was a wooden sign. It was painted, I think, five or six years ago, I think, uh -huh. last time. And you know, it's aged. Yeah, and and I would like to get a metal or some, you know, more improved looking uh, sign there uh, for for the park. But uh, yes, the town does. We have also worked in the past with the state of New York to apply for grants through Parks and Rec. We did get a grant there last time I was in, in office for uh, some improvements to the park uh, through through the state uh, uh, state Parks and Rec and Canal Authority. 
So right now it's, it's just not on the town's list as far as this is one of our parks, weekly maintenance, monthly maintenance, whatever, uh, clean up and things like that. that, we, that we, yeah, we, it is. Okay. We, we, do, no, we do. Okay. We do. No, I know that one of the things that whatever, whatever we do there, if we're, if we're in there cutting anything down, it has to be a threat to something, right? The yeah. tree's got to be basically coming down. Um, has to be a threat to somebody or, or to their property, you know, some parks down there. So that's where you'll see us clearing. Um, the hill that's there needs needs some work. Um, when we get our uh, additional um, uh, part-time students that come in in the summer, uh, this is one of the parks we're going to go in and, and do some more cleanup work and maybe clear out some of the, the overgrowth that's there and uh, do some other work to that park, yeah. Okay. But right now, right now we're really working on getting the parks open, particularly for Little League and softball and so yeah. on, right? And then from there, the next phase is getting the new equipment installed, uh, the new bleachers put in, the picnic tables, everything else we have coming. Um, one of the things that, that I, I guess I, I can announce now, and uh, we, we, had, um, we had asked, uh, we had been asked by the Robert Business Association um, if we had any needs in the town, you know, something that was really an improvement for everyone in the community, if you will. And uh, years ago, we, we had a, a park pavilion at Memorial Park, and it was taken down many, many years ago. Um, I don't know exactly when. It was probably before I, 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 I'm uh, located here next to my in-laws on Paul Avenue. But I recollect it, but it was taken down. The RBA is giving uh, is putting forth money, uh, over $2,000, to help us to construct a new pavilion there. Um, we're also going to be seeking donations from other businesses in town to assist with that uh, construction, and, and really for the purchase of materials. Uh, for the pavilion there so um, there are a number of projects that are slated for all of our town parks uh -huh. in town uh, mr supervisor i also think it's important to note that the board works very much in conjunction with the parks committee which is comprised of rotterdam residents uh which i think you know a lot of them i don't know if you know uh, fran pug lease yeah. and yes. uh, paul cook and yeah. everything yeah. and you know they really keep us um up to speed on what the needs of the parks are and they do they did a cleanup in Jaraka last year and you know and and the money also if I'm not mistaken the money we use in the parks comes from the parkland fees right we're not digging into budget money for any bleachers or right. swing sets or anything right. like that right it comes from yeah. developments so. from the all right so one last mm -hmm. uh, one last topic I think Gary brought this up the Curry Road um, mm -hmm call them luxury apartments or whatever it is on the side but um, so as far as right now I see the progress is going obviously progress is going w what is the town situation with sewer sewer hookups and water I mean is the south is the town equipped right now as is I know that pump station is old that's right down the road is the town equipped to well, take all let me, this let me, let me additional let me, let me go back in time for a minute. Okay, when I, when I, so, and, and again, this is not a finger pointing game, but uh, when I was supervisor last time, uh, the, the six years ago, we were moving in a direction to upgrade every one of our pump stations. Every one of our pump stations needs analysis and upgrading. Uh, most of that has to do not just with development, but you know, things get aged. Uh, they don't yeah. burn properly anymore, right? The DEC also changes the rules. The EPA changes the rules, which is fine. We have to meet those, those, those new, uh, um, uh, those, 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 those new, um, restrictions and, and basically uh, make sure that we're uh, appropriately following all the rules. So the pump station that's there on Curry Road needs to expand, needs to be uh, increased. Uh, the um, McDonald Engineering went in and another engineering firm, which is, um, I'm forgetting their name now, that worked for the developer, I went in and analyzed the lines that are there. Um, what they recognized was that the flow was fine uh, but in our in our estimation, developers' estimation. So when I say our estimation, our town does it, designated engineers, Department of Public Works. They've known for many years that that pump station needed to be upgraded. So we're working right now in conjunction with uh, the developer to get that up that uh, pump station upgraded. Mm -hmm. What will happen is, um, um, it, you know, without going to a lot of detail, but they're going to make the pits larger, and uh, so it, it'll be it'll meet the not only the needs of that project but right now meet the needs of what is already um, um, if you will coming through the through those pipes uh, from the uh, eastern part of town towards our sewer plant okay. so for the most part the developers uh, yeah picking up the tab well we have to put, pick part of it too part uh, of, you know we can't we can't just go in there and tell the developer hey just you know we knew that this problem existed and we did nothing all right and so say we the town and, and so we have we have we have the responsibility towards part of the cost 
they're going to put in part of the cost as well. Um, what, what are the costs? But it's going to it's it's over a quarter million dollars between two fifty to three hundred thousand to do all the work that needs to be done there with the pumps and everything else. So we're 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 in a position now where we've had some conversations with Metroplex. They also may be putting in some funds at this point, but I don't know. You know, without having a signed agreement, I don't want to just go out there and, uh -huh. and say these are the numbers. But we're all going to uh, to to uh, to be putting forth some of the costs of that pump station. And you can rest assured that no project moves forward before this board if infrastructure has not been addressed. Infrastructure is very, very important on the oh, right. It's no. one of the items that everybody on no, this board. No, and I understand that. No, no my, my thought was more of is the finance report burden going to be on the, the taxpayers or the developer. So, and I know I'm going on and probably been past my limit. So, how yeah, many how many units are going over there? Two two hundred and forty. And what's the projected tax revenue? What's the projected tax revenue? I uh, what is the the project is fifteen million. I'm trying to remember the the the, the uh, project. Uh, estimate I think is a fifteen million dollar uh, uh, estimated assessment. And Joe, I could be a little bit off on that, but that's my. That's right. my uh, so we don't have a rough dollar amount that this is going to increase tax base by X number of dollars. You know, I'm going to tell you this. Um, I'm going to say it this way. Um, I think it's great when politicians can. Uh, and when I say politicians, you know, those of us who, who sit up here, I don't think it's fair ourselves politicians. You know, we're, we're, we're here, we live in this in our community, we're here to, to do what's best for the town of Rotterdam, and while we may disagree sometimes, and sometimes passionately or dispassionately about different different topics, um, I, would, I would tell you this, that it's always great to talk about, uh, you know, how much money you're going to get in tax revenue. Uh, the, the problem is that's always a moving target, because the minute you start, you know, you bring in some new, some new development, someone else is coming in with a tax assessment, certiorari, or something else going on, and, you know, could change the numbers. From my perspective, and I'll just speak for myself again, I want to speak for anybody on the board, um, I, I look at it as it was an old site, as you know, it needed to be reworked, and uh, thank God that we have something going in there that's going to add to the tax base. More importantly, we're really working very hard to not only put infrastructure in where necessary, but work where we can bring in more commercial tax base. Right, right. So no. that's why Hamburg Street, Burdeck Street, you know, no. those areas. So with this as well, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, um, we're at a point now where I think that that the town is um, is seeing a lot of activity, right? And uh, and it will be bringing in tax base. When when that tax base comes online is when the project's complete. Uh huh. You know, so that could be a year down the road before we actually see those revenues. All oh, right. Yeah. No, I understand yeah. that. And it's assessed as two hundred eight two hundred eight apartments. Two hundred eight apartments. So it, it probably wouldn't come in at the same tax revenue yeah. as if it was two hundred eight homes. Say again. I'm sorry. It probably wouldn't um, come into the same tax revenue. If no. it was 208 homes as no. opposed to 208 apartments. But, but the, having the same impact on the town as 208 homes would, it's, right. it's so still going to have the same impact. You're also looking the at town. the amount of land that 208 homes would have. To oh, yeah, no, and, and I understand that, but it's still impact on the town's uh, services and yeah. infrastructure. Right. You know, and two, it, whether it's 208 <laughs> homes or 208 apartments, and, it's still and the same impact. The, 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 the goal here is. is the goal here is to look at these as opportunities to strengthen our infrastructure. Like, oh, like right, the supervisor right. no, said, you know, they're going to share some of the burden, but we're also going to take advantage of the opportunity to expand that infrastructure to other needed areas in that general oh. district. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Michael Craig. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor and members of the town board. Um, my name is Michael Craig and I live at 1220 Walnut Avenue. And um, I'm here tonight to present a petition, um, which here I can provide now for yes, please. Thank you. And, and speak on behalf of my neighborhood and um, concerns and issues that we're having with the high water table in our, in our, in our streets. Um, uh, the neighborhoods that we're representing tonight are um, Floral Avenue, Walnut Avenue, Hemlock, uh, Lilac, and Astor. Uh, unfortunately, we could have um, done more streets, but we just ran out of time. People started telling the stories and that just took up so much time as we were going along. Um, but what we're requesting is the town to address our issues and the concerns that we're going to go over and hopefully get some corrective action as soon as possible because it's getting really um, progressively worse in that area. 
um, give you a little bit of a history. Uh, prior to 10 years ago, um, people's basements with the sub pumps running uh, ran very little. If there was a storm, uh, a big storm, it would run. Um, so from 10 years ago to about three and a half years ago, uh, the sump pumps would activate uh, a couple, for most people, we had some that were worse and some that had no issues. Um, they would run for about two months of the year in the spring, and even then it was intermittent. It might come on every hour, or half hour, or something like that. Um, then that brings us to about three and a half years ago is when the issue has been getting progressively worse. And there's supposedly a lot of reasons for it, which I won't get into because it's hearsay, so I can't prove it. Um, but currently the situation now is that the sump pumps for many of the um, land or homeowners are running 24-7, 12 months a year. Some are running nine months a year. Uh, they're running now in the winter where they never ran in the winter. Uh, people are ha people who never had problems with water are now having problems with water in their basement. People who had problems, now the problems are worse. Uh, folks now have problems with the water, but now they're getting seepage into their basement. And what I mean by that, water is seeping in through the walls and the floors. And so it's soaking their basements. It's maybe not flooding where you get a foot of water. In some cases it is, some cases it's not. Uh, but it's becoming a real inconvenience, but it's becoming a real problem. And when I look at it, um, in the past few years, it's the increase in the water has been causing health issues with folks. It's been um, financial burdens for individuals, and also on, on the um, quality of life for the folks. It's just getting to be such a chore and, and a concern for people. So what I was going to do was go over. We did the petition. We went around and we got um, seventy obtained seventy six signatures. And we had comments and addresses and a comment some of the folks were saying some of the issues that they had. So I'm going to touch on some of the, I think, more important ones. And I'll try to go through them fast to stay within my time frame. But when I looked at the health concerns, um, when residents' basements flood, and they can flood for the seepage coming in, power outage, and the pumps don't work, or the pumps just fail. But when that's happening, um, it's creating damp and uh, moisture in the basements. It's, um, uh, it's a moldy environment which is causing, so for some of the things that people tell it, are telling us, it's nasal stiffness, uh, throat irritation, coughing, wheezing, eye irritation, and in some, some cases, skin irritation. These are the symptoms that some of the folks are, are experiencing now. And when they've gone to the doctor, some of them they told us that the doctors can't tell them for sure that's what's causing it, but they said it could cause it. And if you haven't had it before and you're, and you're experiencing these now, it's a good chance that's what's causing it. So the, the homeowners are working like crazy to try to do what they can. And they're, and they're, they're about at their wit's end, believe me. Um, if it's not corrected the mold in the basement, and in some cases it's not because the folks, the insurance companies didn't cover all the repairs, and so they've been trying to do the rest on their own. Uh, many folks in, those, in that neighborhood have finished basements where they have sheetrock, carpet, electronics, you know, TVs, stereos, and uh, tools, and all, all the rest, so it becomes a real issue. Um, but if it's not treated, they could have chronic sinus problems, mold-induced in, asthma, skin infections through rooms, <coughs> neurological problems, and then people are experiencing headaches. So it's a real issue. Um, some residents we found cannot even utilize their basements. They have finished basements, they can't even go in there. Uh, one individual has a mold allergy when she went to the doctor and she found out that this is new. She didn't have it two years ago. It's, they discovered it now. Other folks, because of the moldy environment and the moisture that's in the uh, basement, that it's um, re um, giving them all kinds of trouble with their sinuses, their allergies. So they have this basement which they can't even use. They can't even go into it. Um, we have in this neighborhood where we have some residents who are more mature in age. Uh, they've been there for over 40 years. We're starting to get an influx of some younger children. And unfortunately, those are the two age groups that are most affected by these conditions. Um, in the winter months, what people are doing is they're pumping the water from their basements into the storm drains if they can, or into the roads or their yards. It's the only place that they have. And in the winter months, the storm drains are overflowing and they're flooding the streets. 
and then people are pumping into the streets. And between the two, the streets are freezing. And we've, I know a lot of residents, including myself, have called. We've called in and we complained about it because you see cars when you hit a stop sign, they're sliding through it. More importantly, more alarming is that uh, we have uh, young children. That's a bus stop. So they're on that corner when buses are coming, and the last thing we want to do is see a bus hit one of these kids. So that was a concern, you know, and they did come in, they saw it. We're not, it's not a, any, you know, the highway department and the water folks have been responsive when we have called them. Um, and then it gets, it, it goes further. I mean, people are having issues with their pets. We've had um, uh, folks who have um, dogs when they have the standing water in the yards, the dogs are drinking the water and they were getting sick, so they took them to the vet, and the vet's telling them that they're getting parasites from the standing water. One that threw me was a person who had um, an indoor cat and started saying that the cat got fleas. And at first time I watched them, okay, so your cat's got fleas. And what they found out was that the high water table is pushing the sand up through, and if the, they had French drains. So the sand is coming up, and with the sand was fleas. So the fleas were all in their basement from that. So they had to get an exterminator in there. They had to bomb it, treat the sand and everything else. So it's affecting them, all the pets. Um, some of the folks have standing water in the front of their yards, their backyards. And what that's doing is um, it's a breeding ground for mosquitoes and other insects. And not only is that a nuisance in the summer, but it's also these are insects that carry diseases or potentially could carry diseases. Um, and one of the things that one of the tenants brought me over to show me was that in between Walnut and Hemlock, at the end of the street towards the railroad tracks, there's a big manhole. There's no cover on it. There's nothing. So people that are riding their trail bikes, walking, or whatever, they could fall right into it. And Walnut, Walnut you, and Hemlock, you said? Yep. It's at the end by the railroad tracks. I actually have... I also provided several pictures and one of those pictures is of that man helped me at home and then you can actually see the water coming along the tracks and it looks like water is coming under the tracks from colonial manor and it's feeding into those people's yards so it's actually coming right through so we're, we're helping them drain their water so we're, we're kind of nice people um, on the financial end of it it's becoming real alarming I mean our home values are decreasing some folks that tried to sell their house are having a tough time because nobody wants to buy a house with a swimming pool in the basement. Um, some pumps on several owners, they're burning out one a year. And not only do you have the cost of the sump pump, but you have the cost of all the damage that goes to their basement. If it's just a plain basement, it's not so bad. But if it's a finished basement, they have a lot of financial um, hardships right there. Um, some residents, we found, they have two sump pumps coming, uh, running, and they're not a backup. There are two sump pumps, because they brought us down to show us, there's two sump pumps running at the same time to keep up with the water. They had one in about a year ago. They couldn't keep up with the water, so they had a contractor come in. He had to put new French drains inside the building in their basement and then put another pump in. One individual has three sump pumps running. Three. Do you have that detail in the report? Yes. Right? It, in fact, on those addresses, they, as comments, they put that in there. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and then what some of the residents are more and more doing is they're putting backup systems in their house because when the pump goes, you know, or if there's a power outage. So they have a battery backup. They're putting in a water jet backup system. They're just costing more and more money. Some folks um, are buying generators because we're having more power outages now, especially in the winter. We never had to worry about water running in the wintertime. But now they're buying generators j just for that purpose. And people who don't have them are trying to go out and get them, or some folks are looking into Generex. But these are all costs that they would never have incurred if it wasn't for this issue. Um, the, uh, the Again, I talked a little bit about the seepage of water coming in, causing damage. We went in, we had to help some folks. I mean, it's just their basement's all wet, everything is soaked. Um, the insurance companies, what we found, one individual said that they've had three claims and their insurance company canceled. If you have one claim right off the bat, your insurance goes up. So there's another expense that's, that's happening for the folks. Um, 
I think one of the one of the less that's becoming very alarming is that um, just on Walnut alone, there's at least six, maybe seven homeowners who've had to replace their leach fields in the past two years. And for several of them, when the contractor came in and did the work, told them the reason that they had a problem is because of the high water table. It's pushing all the sand and all the debris up into the pipes and it's clogging them and ruining them. Uh, some folks this past year had issues with their septic tanks. So they went and had them cleaned and when they did, whether it was Rotterdam Sec, whatever it was, came in and said it was running slowly and they're saying it's going to continue. We can pump it, but your water table so high it's just backfilling it. So they're having those issues, which is now you're talking about it could be underneath the health too on that one. Um, with some pumps running more of cost, zero, people are saying their electric bill or not is going up, so it's an expense. Um, one of the concerns, and we can't prove it, is that the water table is becoming so high that it's deteriorating people's foundations, and they figure that's why they're getting more and more water coming in through the foundation. It's becoming more porous with the water just laying up against it. If you figure the water table's five feet in some areas, four feet and three feet in others, it's got, you know, right up to your basement. Um, then, one of the things that happen when people, and that you see in the picture on one of the houses, they're bringing in um, quick response. Just a couple weeks ago, they had Mr. Basement in, and, you know, to do all the work at, at tremendous expense to them. But one of, the, one of the tenants found, and I'm sure probably the rest of us have it, is when they came in a contractor to do the work because of all the moisture in the basement and the wood they had termite damage so there's another issue with folks um, and again i can't say that everybody's experiencing that but as you start ripping things out you see it more um, and and i think well, i'll just close it i got some more but i'll just close it with the fact that um i know folks are now very afraid to go on vacation they're even afraid to go away for a few days up with the concern that there's some pump might fail or there's a power outage. I know people that go away, I go away for work and we have, I have people, we have people come in and check the house for us. It's becoming that bad. So what we're hoping is with this petition that, you know, the town will take, really investigate, address these issues and hopefully we get some corrective action as soon as possible on it. Well, we're gonna, uh, I appreciate the detail. If you have that kind of detail on this, I appreciate that very much because that'll help us a lot. Okay. And, and you know, you've got you've got our commitment. To, we'll we'll definitely address what we can, and we'll we'll, we'll, um, we'll look into it and see what we can do. You know, that's um, short term and long term, and, and we'll get together at some point in the near future. But let, give us uh, give us a little bit of time here to kind of look look things over from okay. a perspective of the stormwater system that's there, and the roads and some other things that we fish we have uh, the locations and where people may have one sump pump, two sump pumps, whatever. That helps us too because if you know we start looking at where things are, where we may have storm uh, water uh, pipes that go nowhere, uh, where you just have literally what as you and I spoke earlier a little bit, yeah. you know, a deadhead is what we call it. Basically, the water just yeah. you know goes into uh, into the back into the ground, uh, so it's going somewhere. Uh, so all those all those kinds of factors. So let us. Um, Give us some time, but we'll be in touch with you, and okay. we can have a, a meeting Appreciate together. It. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, in your neighborhood. Um, so the town knows for the most part yeah. the worst areas because they've been over there. Yeah, I know at the end of Walnut by the railroad tracks. You know, they said that was a real bad area where it wasn't that before. Yeah. They know some of it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you thank very you much. Your Appreciate time. your time and your input. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Joe Admin. Good evening. Uh, it's actually Joe Admire. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. That's okay. Patent and chips, not the strong point. <laughs> um, 9 Astra Street. Um, actually, I'm here in essence for the same cause that Michael presented earlier. Um, I would uh, reiterate everything he said. Um, you know, we have some concerns with property values are lower. Um, you know, we maintain a stockpile of sump pumps in case it goes out in the middle of the night. You know, nothing's open to get one, so we maintain a backup pump. Um, not only is there a backup pump in the hole, but we keep yet another one as a spare 
to do that. Um, uh, Michael touched on one of my biggest concerns. Um, haven't been a resident of the town for quite some time and haven't been an employee of a government agency for a long time, I'm about to retire. And unfortunately, coupled with that, I'm reluctant to leave home. Um, you know, we are contemplating setting up one of those Generac systems now, along with uh, the re-engineering of the existing two pumps to make sure that there's a, the primary pump as well as a backup, and then, you know, the generator outside that kicks on, um, you know, our estimates on the generator are somewhere between six and $8,000. Um, that's not something that um, I feel is really a, a justifiable expense. Um, in the normal course of home ownership, you know, the power goes out periodically and you're inconvenienced, so be it. But when you stand to risk all the other ancillary damage associated from having you know, your sump pump hole filling up and overflowing, um, currently, right now, our sump pump is running about every 14 minutes it cycles. Um, two weeks ago, it was going off every two minutes. Um, as Michael alluded to, you know, we've been here 25 years. It used to run, you know, in the spring when we had the meltdown, it would run, you know, for a week, week and a half, every 15, 20 minutes it might cycle uh, for a relatively short amount of time. Um, three and a half or four years ago, much of that has changed and it's progressively gotten worse. Um, you know, you're in a situation where you, you as he indicated, I also travel for work periodically. Um, I'm fortunate that my, my wife is home. She's retired. She's well trained now in setting up the portable generator. You know, in a hurry, I think she's got it down to about six and a half minutes. Um, you know, she's doing very well. Um, but that, that's really not. It's kind of infringing on the quality of life. You know, you want to be able to, as you retire, we want to travel, um, go visit the kids. You know, they're good to see occasionally. You know, <laughs> you know short short bursts. Um, you know, and I think Michael touched on a number of key things. You know, there's potential for mold in the houses. There's health issues. As all of us age, we're concerned about that. Um, you know, you have the outdoor aspect where it's a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Um, I mean, I believe he has a pretty comprehensive package there. Um, now, he's an extremely nice guy. I am not. Um, so I guess what I would be looking for is you indicated that you'd like some time to review this and I'm certain if there's things that need to be done you want to evaluate what the water table is I would expect that there's uh, some infrastructure documents on the existing storm drains to review I would imagine that as part of all of your budgetary constraints you look at what the average snowfalls are year over year to budget for overtime salt um, probably look at what the average rainfalls are to figure out what the mowing is in the parks and any other public areas so I think all that data is available and from what I've been able to see, there hasn't been, barring a couple storms that we had, we've had some significant storms, um, including the hurricane a few years ago, um, there really hasn't been a progressive worsening of you know, the global warming affecting our area in that light to represent the change in the water table just by quantities of water coming down. But I imagine that's something that you'll look at as well. But when would be a reasonable time for us to expect some feedback? Probably within a week. Okay. I'll say within a week because uh, I just need to be able to schedule a couple of you know times with uh, folks down DPW, the highway superintendent, and we just get together and start looking over what we have. Sure. I mean, quite yeah. honestly, a week is a, a rather aggressive time frame, especially to pull well, through a number of areas. I mean, 30 days, I would even think is fair. Well, let me say this to you, Mr. Edmeyer, because if, if his report has that level of detail on it, you know, we we can we can be in the neighborhood looking at where where everything is, you know, where things are, where they are not. Okay. And maybe making some assessments and judgments. But one thing I want to ask you, did, 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 did I hear you right? Or, or maybe if you could tell me, how has it gotten worse? Is it only worse in the last few years? Or is it was it progressively getting worse for a longer period of time? Um, I've been here for 25. Um, I would say the first 10 to 15 were the standard plateau. Um, springtime, you know, a couple of weeks it would run. Not with any, you know, not with any uh, normal cycle. Normal cycle, no real frequency. If the power was out for two or three hour, hours, you know, the hole wouldn't overflow. I mean, you know, it wasn't um, wasn't really uh, a quality of life issue, and you know, where you were living in fear of what you're, you know, what's going to happen in your basement when you get downstairs. You know, when you go up that last step, last step, you know, you can get wet. Um, uh, Ten years ago, ten to twelve, it started to increase somewhat um, we saw some development in the area on the other side of the tracks as Michael alluded to which we suspect perhaps changed some of the flow of the underground water um, of course I can't prove it I'm not a civil engineer um, yeah, so you know, the other thing that happens I want to tell you is that in, in some areas where we have you know I, I kind of mentioned this a little, a little bit to Michael and, and you know the town the town is both uh, both blessed and somewhat and somewhat inhibited also by um, uh, a challenge 
by the way things are constructed here, right? The rail lines, the power lines, the, uh, the, the, the main county roads, state roads, highways. So when you look at the town, you've got all these little pies. If you really just look at the green areas where there's homes, it's so when, um, if you're in an area which is more, which, which is just a lower level, and you have all these other impacts around you, uh, one, one or two changes can impact the entire neighborhood, and they don't have to be substantial, really, and from the perspective of, of, uh, of new, new, uh, new development, or in some cases, it, it literally is, um, it's, uh, and I, I don't want to go as far as to use the term malfeasance, but it's, uh, there are storm drains and storm uh, water uh, that um, areas where, you know, that, that are on public utility properties or that the town itself has not maintained properly. And so we're going to look at those too, obviously, as part of all this. Because from what you're telling me with, you know, besides the development, I think there may be some other issues here that are, uh, again, a confluence of, of, of problems. Uh, that, that are keeping that. the water, that are keeping, that's keeping the water there, where you're just probably cycling it from your house to the neighbor's house and whoever's lower than you, and it just keeps, just keeps going. Okay. Oh, so yeah. that's why that detail is so important. I'm, I'm really glad that you, you went to that level of detail and you provide us with photographs and everything else because that, that's going to help us tremendously. Otherwise, we would be doing a, what you didn't get paid to do, which was going over there knocking on the doors and, and saying, hey, hi, we're from the town. Can we come in? And uh, so I appreciate it very, very much. Yeah. Absent any type of a sewer system that really takes the water and brings it out of the area, yes. we're perpetuating the cause. I throw it outside into the yard and seeps into somebody else's yeah. house on the perimeter of my property. Uh, I mean, I, we all realize that, but yet, we have no alternatives. Yeah. Um, so we are looking for some type of an alternative. But again, um, a week would be fantastic. But I, I would think, I was just looking for some type of a time parameter okay. as to when there would be a reasonable follow-up. I, I can tell you that we're, we're going to be looking at it um, this coming week. And then uh, I would anticipate that if I can get um, get everyone's uh, kind, of, kind of schedules together here we'll try to we'll try to you know get out uh, get out there and at least have some people within in the field within the next week or two to right. see right you know and make assessments make sure there's no broken pipes or whatever might be you know so we'll go on start with that i appreciate you coming here as well oh, thank you and i put this gentleman yeah, several there's, times there's, a, there's another thing that i'm trying to think it could be a problem for too um i mean rotterdam is sandy soil so that should absorb the water. But have you guys had a lot of development in that area? Because if you had a lot of development in that area, then there's there's not soil to absorb. Uh, not in the immediate area, but on the other side of the tracks, as Michael alluded to, there's been um, enormous development in the Colonial Manor um, in that last in that window of time. Well, that, start to that might have been one of the changes that has led to that. It may have, and then of course we're also concerned that the you know uh, the Curry Road development, those 208 units. Um, there's displacement there as well, um, so you know, uh, you know, and again, you know, you're as the, as the crow flies or as the water seeps on the ground, we're you know a quarter mile, and that's not all that far for there to be yet an additional ripple effect, pun intended, on our water situation. You know. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Jason Gaymans. Hey guys, um, I live at Tolo Wake Walnut. I'm with those guys. So do you guys that there's been a several change? I bought the house in 2007. The previous owner put bushes up next to the walls and some other stuff. And I don't know if you know what surface uh, French drains are. I side the so I put those in my house. So I can get it out to the curb and take it back as far as I can. That stopped the walls from weeping. And I ripped out the interior because he finished it. So I have all that invested in the property. I do have a backup pump too for the water. So if it does flood, do lose power, guess what? I use the town water to pump out the basement, keep my basement dry. But then I'm like, this really sucks. So I was talking to my neighbor, John, who's here today, and he sat there and said the previous owner had some problems. So all of it started making sense. The interior front straight of my house was installed after the house was built. I could tell this by the cement job. He did a horrible job down there, but it's in. Then afterwards, though, I guess they approached the town. I found this out from the neighbors too, and they installed a large drywall outside my house. So this is this big steel pipe. So I popped a manhole cover off one day, wondering how deep it goes. Close to eight to 10 feet deep. 
that's at least four feet below my uh, footing, right? Also, when I put those French drains in, when I was digging down, there's only so far I could get before actually just the soil, you couldn't, it wasn't no longer stable. So you couldn't even dig down to see what I had at my footing. So I just put them on the surface. But that drain used to have a, a meter on my property, but it's no longer here and the town took it out. All right, so that's no longer in use, but it's still there to this day. Then all of a sudden, after Irene went through, I guess we found out we were on a deadhead. So all that water, we just kept recycling. And I see this in the front of my foundation every time, facing the street. That's the French drain that's always filled and it's inside. So I sit there and uh, started wondering about this. And actually, as the water kept going down the street, it froze that one. It caused about three to four potholes, kind of buggered up the street in there. And then uh, the town did come through. And they said, we got it, we got it. I wasn't there for the day they installed it all, but I saw some of it being installed. They put a pipe from that, and then it started flowing actually towards Mike and the other guys, the master. So all of a sudden, they started inheriting all my water. Go to walk my dog at the end of the street, and all their grates are still full now. So I can't wait for us to get a nice deep freeze and all those great till I can next. When was that work done? This was done within about a year, a year ago. So this actually set <coughs> me out a little bit, but my pump does cycle as often as his does. And every time it cycles, roughly pumping the pipes and the pit, it's about 20 gallons. So I'm, every hour, I'm moving 80 to 100 gallons of water all year long. So this has been since day one. Here, uh, <laughs> my, I don't have my wife trained, that's why I have the backup pump, but she likes to sit there and actually tell me a lot of things I should do. And, uh, one of those things is constantly running the humidifier. So that's always running in the basement. So basically the water over the years since that house has been gotten built has risen. So it's not like if we think it's been that way, no, it's been that common. So now they're inheriting all my water. So that's good. I have a little bit less to pump out, but they're inheriting it. So hope you guys sit there and try to get something planned to fix all this stuff. Thank you for your time. I'm sure it's probably too big of a problem, but I just would want to mention because I had a, a minor, more of a minor problem where it flooded out and I had to take it off through all my carpets and everything. But I went about uh, putting dry lock, the, the waterproof uh, paint, and I did the floor. I scraped everything down really good so nothing moves. I did the whole floor and I did halfway up the wall. And I haven't had any problems, and that was my walls were dry. Years ago. I started getting the oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I started uh, taking the, the floor. It, they had previous paint and a previous finish job. What's happened recently, too, is I've discovered a new thing called iron ox. Now you get to sit there and go online. Now I sat there, and since I was getting sweaty from my floor, and the perimeter drains were backing up, so I busted holes in that. My wife did not like the holes in the floor. So now I actually had direct flow to the sump pump for a season just to see how long this, and their holes in the floor lasted a few months, to see where this water was coming. So that I found those lines were silting in, just like they were saying their leach fields were silting in. There's also a brown slime, right? And that's all with iron ox. And the thing is, when that hardens, that basically destroys perimeter drain systems. The easiest way to get rid of that is hot water and a little bit of bleach. So I had to flush the lines out to try to get rid of all that stuff. So I have, now I got two caps I can remove I can put a drain snake down there on a garden hose. You've probably seen the same ones online, or I can put a hot, one drain hot basically on this thing, and I can hog out, I can clean these lines out. I don't want it to replace the interior drain. That's got to be a few bucks. So Either way, it sounds like work you shouldn't have to be doing yeah. to enjoy your quality of life. So this is clearly an issue that needs to be put on the front burner and addressed and everybody's comments and everybody's detail. It just allows us to address this with the urgency that it deserves. But if that's not on the list, just make sure that drywall is mentioned at 1208. Okay. So they <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure, please. Come on. Thank you. Sure. Um, sure. You alluded to the fact that there was some type of a pump in that dry well, mm -hmm. and that was recently disconnected? Or no, it's been disconnected. How long, John? Three years? No, a long time ago, probably 15 years ago. Okay. Um, just a follow-up question on that, if you could look, to look into that. Is there, what was the intent of the pump? What was the effectiveness of it? And is well, the highway superintendent is aware of it. He's looked at it. He, he knows about that. Right, you remember? 
idea I was not to leave like 15 years ago or something. We discovered it down there and we were questioning about that. Because it was relatively dry, they didn't need it anymore over there, so it was removed. Well, so so when that pump working? Well, where was it discharging the water to? If it's a, a deadhead, then you said it was a deadhead. Now they can't get it to you guys. Oh, that's why. <laughs> 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 I think, I think the best, I think really the best approach is for us to look look everything over and get get over there and uh, right in the neighborhood and see where things are going. That pump was put in when the house, right after the house was built by Severino, because I talked to their son, he's in Florida now, but he's the contractor, and that was his parents' house. So that pump's been in there for 40 years. Oh. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm Derek Adams, I live at 1224, and I'm actually Mike's neighbor, and it actually deadheads right in front of my house, and I have a three-year-old. You know that stuff's it's creating green slime and stuff all inside because it's all resting water on top of the grade along the drain. So basically, we have to divert our water to the other way because there's, there's nowhere to put the water, and we're just constantly recycling it. Our our sub pump is taken on every 13 seconds, you know, for months, and I mean that's pretty expensive. Sure. You know, so. Well, we will. You know, you have our commitment to come, so we will we'll be there. And thanks for bringing it to our attention. I'm on the same subject. I've lived in that neighborhood for 67 years. Yeah. Okay, it was off fields when I moved there, and there was a beautiful creek right down where Mike is talking about. Right behind the Quick Pit. It went through Quick Pit, down Sunrise Boulevard, to Putri Pond, where the park is in. The town very nicely closed it all in so that water cannot get to the creek to be taken away. Those drains may be blocked, with, with rub, rubbish or something, but there's something definitely wrong with the system that you put in. And my cellar, Mike's been there, he knows. Okay. And I've had these problems on and off. I've put in all these fancy drains and everything else. It's been like that for years. Clearly we need a permanent solution over there, not a band-aid. Definitely. Well, thank you. Thanks for your comments, everyone. And again, thanks for the detail. And we'll be in touch very, very soon. Thank you. That's all we have, okay. All right, um, let's move into the resolutions. And if you want to stay, you know, a little bit after the meeting, we can converse some more if that's okay. For those of you that may want to approach us. <coughs> Resolution 13117. Appoint Thomas E. Squires of Rotterdam, New York, 12306. It's the position of Building Safety Inspector for the Department of Public Works, full-time, provisional, with full employee benefits with an annual salary of 42,844.56, effective May 1st, 2017. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make the motion. A okay, motion by Member Larmore. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Christo. Anyone on the question? Uh, yes, Mr. Supervisor. I just want to say, I, I looked at uh, Thomas's resume and he's got a lot of experience with all the different trades and uh, I think it's really great that we have someone going into this position that has the background for this position. And I'm really glad to see that happen. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Ms. Marco, we have a motion by Member Larmore, second by Member Christou. Could you please call uh, the, the vote? Mr. Christou? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Guano's absent. Mr. Thomas Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 13117 passes in town. Stand up so we can give you a round. Yeah, you can't get to work now because it's after hours, but you know. <laughs> Monday morning, right now. On May 1st. Is that Monday? All right. <laughs> tells you where I am, where my head is right now. These months are going by way too quick. Thank you very much. Look forward to having you here. And um, I think you're going to join a, a good team downstairs. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, Jim Keith has been working feverishly now for the past uh, couple of months because we've been shorthanded down there for code enforcement and other other matters. So um, you're, you're going to be busy. Thank you. So thanks, yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, resolution 132.17, please. Appoint Jake Ayers of Rotterdam, New York, 12306, to the position of laborer in the Water and Sewer Maintenance Department, full-time probationary, with full employee benefits at an hourly rate of 19.7183, effective May 1st, 2017. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christo. Is there a second, please? I'll second it. Okay, second by Member Larmore. Anyone on the question? 
Okay, one thing I just wanted to say on the question of what, we, what we've been doing systematically for the past year is really rebuilding our water and sewer maintenance department from um, the ground up again, right? Would you say that, Matt, is, 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 is consistent? And, um, and we need to probably add another one or two laborers in that department for all the work that needs to be done around town. And it's not just the work that, you know, that, that, that you're, you're talking about, it's all of the other work that we have that's going on with our, particularly with, with our, um, with our water, when we have water breaks, et cetera. So there's a lot happening. We need a lot of, uh, of our, um, of our fire hydrants replaced. They're, they're old. They can't even, they can't even take the caps off of some of them. So we have to, we have to replace those. Luckily we have enough, we have a lot of them out there. So we haven't had any, any issues yet, but, uh, but we do need, we do need a, a lot of work done and, uh, we need the laborers to do it. Uh, so I appreciate the board's, um, support for, for this position. And is, is um, let's call for the vote first, uh, Ms. Marco. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Villano's absent. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, Resolution 132.17 passes. Is Jake here tonight? Yes, he is. Jake, could you stand up for us? And thanks very much. Jake, Jake's got a lot of experience also. He knows that he knows how to do quite a bit. Don't, uh, and he looks, he looks like he's about 18, but he's, uh, he's got, he's got a lot of experience, uh, working, uh, out there in the field. And, uh, we're, we're, we're happy that you came to us, apply for the job. Thanks very much. And welcome, welcome on board. And you'll be working with a, a bunch of great, uh, great guys down there. So thank you. Okay. Resolution 133.17. Award the bids open on Friday, April 7, 2017 for water and sewer materials, plastic pipe, ductile pipe, bell clamps, stainless repair clamps, Ford lead repair fittings, copper tubing, compression quick co coplings, coplings, curb box shutoffs for the Town of Rotterdam Sewer Department for the year 2017 to the following bidders as described on the attached chart to Blair Supply Corporation, 785 Behan Road, Rochester, New York, 14624. Ferguson Waterworks, 612 Pierce Road, Clifton Park, New York, 12065, and Volano Brothers Incorporated, 7 Hemlock Street, Latham, New York, 12110. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christou. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmore. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Volano absent. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 13317 passes. Resolution 13417. Award the bids open on Friday, April 7th, 2017, for the purchase of sodium hex to be used by the town of Rotterdam for the year 2017 to Shannon Chemical, P.O. Box 376, Melbourne, Pennsylvania, 19355. Can okay, you have a motion, please? I'll move. Okay, motion by Member Christo. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Second by Member Larmore. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Guano absent. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 13417 passes. Resolution 13517. Authorized budget transfers by the town controller to various accounts for 2017. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christo. Second, please. I'll second. Okay, so second by Member Miller Herrera. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Volano absent. Mr. Tomazo? Yes. Four yes. Okay, resolution 13517 passes. Anyone have um, anything this evening under committee reports or miscellaneous? Mm -hmm. Anything that I uh, maybe forgot to mention this evening? No? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, we're clear. All right. Uh, may I have a motion for adjournment? I'll move. Okay, motion by Member Christopher for adjournment. I'm getting good at second. Place. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> We have a motion. All in favor, say aye for adjournment. Aye, opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming this evening.